Welcome back to Inside Boxes Throwdown. My name is Steve Johnson, Ray Martinez. We're going to talk in this third episode as we always do. We talk about upcoming fights card this uh, uh, Thursday, December the 3rd. You know, we just had our guest, Manny Lowe, Manny Lowe Lopez, who is fighting on December 3rd in Costa Mesa, <coughs> California. Okay, the, um, let's talk about, move on to that. that. That fight card, real quickly, I'm sorry, in December the 3rd. Uh, the main event is Aiden Mares <coughs> versus Pedro Lopez. <coughs> And then we have a Malcolm McAllister versus Michael Falk. Okay. Um, let's go to December 5th, Saturday. A radio, a fight that I'm really, really looking forward to. That's <clears> going to <throat> be on Showtime. It's in New York. Daniel Jacobs versus Peter Quillen. 12 rounds for Jacobs' WBA regular middleweight title. Um, undercard, Jesus Cuellar versus Jonathan Akendo. 12 rounds for Cuellar's. WBA regular featherweight title. Chris Algieri's on the fight card and Marcus Brown. But Lowe, let's talk a little, a little bit about Daniel Jacobs and Peter Quillen. Okay, good, good. You know, Peter Quillen, uh, it still, it still um, dumbfounds me how he fights very good and he goes out there and he does what he's supposed to do, but his, his, you don't hear a lot of talk about him as far as the publicity around the boxing scene, you know, uh, around the boxing talk and, and things like that. And uh, I'm just wondering why, because he actually goes and uh, uh, performs rather well when he fights in the ring. So yeah. I'm interested to see how this fights and kind of wanted to see if it's a, it's a breakaway. I, I don't know what, why, but I like, I like Quillen and I think, uh, what do you call him, Kid Chocolate? Yes. And I think, uh, I think he's an entertaining fighter and he's a skilled fighter. Mm-hmm. Well, Daniel Jacobs, you remember, he uh, overcame some health issues, mm -hmm. comes back into the ring. Um, I, I agree with you. I think that this is the breakout fight for somebody. Yeah. I don't know who it's <laughs> going to be. Um, I've been long been a fan of Peter Quillen, but I do think the one question about him is we know he can punch. Yeah. But can he take a punch? Yeah. And that's what. And I think that Daniel Jacobs is going to test his chin. One other fight that on this card that I have to mention, our girl, Nono Noemi Bosquez. She's fighting again her second rematch with Heather Hardy. The first time they fought cool. in New York, um, Nono lost a split decision, and we all we've talked many times about the split decisions on the road. Oh yeah, I yeah. think Nono's planning on going in here and and flat out getting a win this time. But Heather Hardy once again at home in front of her home crowd. Uh, Lelo, I'm glad to see this fight be on this card no matter what. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk, a lot of big talk about oh yeah, women and you know need to be on these fight cards. Um, this isn't a pay-per-view fight card, but the just the fact that they have two girls who are well-known, um, who have marketed themselves well, yeah, well yeah. on a fight card is a plus to me. You know, uh, uh, Noemi, is she, uh, I'm, I'm just kind of wondering why someone hasn't taken her under the wing and actually has put her on the A side of, of some of these events because uh, she's an entertaining fighter, she's good, and obviously... If she's out there fighting anyone and everyone that wants wants some, uh, that says a lot for 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 a boxer. So, you know, I'm just kind of a little. Uh, um, well, think, I think she's a little bit like uh, uh, Manny Lopez. Well, I going, think that she's she's advanced past Florida. That's where she's from. I think she's uh, out of the local scene in Florida. She's branching out in New York. There's other things, other fights will come up for her. Okay, I hear that there's some fights working for her, uh, 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 across the water. And, you know, that's going to be great for her. Good. She can go over Good. to, you know, to Russia or Ukraine over there and win one of those fighters. But pay attention to um, the women's boxing. For all these people talking about it, now it's time for to do something. Good. Okay. The next thing, well, I'm going to turn this over to you because there were two fighters that fight <clears> on the fight card that you're interested in, mainly because of their affiliation, their background. You go ahead. Okay, good. Now we're done with the uh, any up upcoming fights because I'm gonna get into this and I'm gonna get into. I, I just turned it over to you. Okay. Matter of fact, let me <laughs> let me drink my Pepsi. No, I can't drink Pepsi. <laughs> Kenny Lee Wells, I can't drink Pepsi. I want you to know. Let me that let way. me tell you what I want to bring <clears throat> to your attention. I, I think we're seeing we're seeing something happening in in professional boxing in the background and it's quietly happening, kind of kind of like a subliminal message. Okay. And I think that we all need to pay attention to this because I think it can be a good thing, but we will we will find out. Now, Steve, we all understand how the alphabet organizations pretty much control boxing, mm -hmm. especially the WBC because they're so far above WBC. And then you got WBO, uh, IBF, uh, WBA. WBA. Um, you got these organizations that 
they, they pretty much control the who fights, where they fight. They make a lot of money on sanctioning fights. And because of this, we, the boxing fans, don't always get the fights that we want to see. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's always the fights that they want to put together that's going to put more money into their organization uh, now, present, and in the future. Okay, well, Aiba recognized this problem in professional boxing. Now, if you remember, Aiba was always amateur boxing, uh, uh, international amateur boxing. Yes. Okay? And back to Their few, name actually, excuse me, but their name actually is still AIBA. It used to be Amateur International Boxing Association. They took the amateur out, and now they want to just be, co be called Aiba. But international boxing. Yeah. And they did this for a reason. They did this because they, they, they recognized and they were going to break into the pro the pro game, and I think they, they did that years ago, maybe five years ago or so. They, they started mm -hmm. easy, and they brought the organization, the WSB. Um, uh, APB. Uh, and the APB, Aiba Pro Boxing. Now, the APB is actually pro boxers that fight within the I APB Boxing League. Okay, it's all pro, international pro boxing. Now, here's, here's, the, here's, here's where I'm saying that they're, they're, they're slowly breaking in, and they're, they made their move. They made a move. <laughs> and on the Kalitzko card. In Dusseldorf, Germany. In Germany, they actually had two APB fighters, two Aiba pro boxers, compete on that undercard. And then pro boxers were, uh, were uh, David Graf from Germany. And he took on Anton Pinchuk from Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan, okay, and this was, people just saw that as a major fight, but this was actually a major door opening for the APP to come in and compete with the WBC and all the, all the alphabet soups. Now, I think this is a good thing for the boxing fans because APB doesn't really set their sights on undefeated fighters, and this is what we're going to do, we're going to have an undefeated they're more interested in competitive, competitive fights that are going to bring out the best in each fighter. So you, you don't expect to see a, an undefeated fighter that's maybe 23-0 and 0 fighting a guy that's 16-18. and 18. That's not going to happen, okay? And, and so, so typically, I think we're seeing a shift. We're seeing, we're seeing the move. And the beauty thing I think about it is that when you talk about Aiba, they have the money to do this. That's been the biggest problem with anyone breaking into this stronghold that the alphabet, alphabet sanctioning organizations have in the world of boxing because nobody has the money to get in there and compete. Okay, it's, it's, it's been a stronghold. Well, AIBA has the money. They, they are an international organization and they have the money to make the move. So, Steve, are we seeing... A major earthquake in the boxing world right now it's just trembling mm -hmm. but the door opens the door right. open they're in and if we see this continue which I think we will because if you notice I don't know if there's any connection but if you notice the, the Kalitsko fight there was something on the line from every organization except the WBC basically you're right okay? there was you're the right. IBF was on the line the, the WBA. Uh, WBA the WBO uh, but WBC was nowhere, nowhere out there. We know they've been feuding for the past few years. They've yes. been feuding, and uh, WBC is now saying, "Okay, well, if you're going to come into am uh, pro boxing, we're going to go into amateur boxing." Mm -hmm. So they've been doing some smokers around uh, uh, to, to no avail. But anyhow, well, I can uh, you know, you all know that I I love to disagree with the radio. I I can't <laughs> disagree with you on this. This is one where I I think you you're onto it, right? Um, this, like you said, this. This, these two boxers on this fight card in Dusseldorf, Germany, mm. uh, did won't make waves at all here in the United States. Why not? But for us, it's not a it's not an earthquake, but it is a tremor. It's a tremor. It's definitely a tremor. They, and they have they have both slowly got a crack in the door. Uh, sooner or later, you'll see um, uh, um, that they definitely kick the door open. And I think you are exactly right when you say, Aiba Pro Boxing and the WB, WSB, the World Series of Boxing have made, given all boxers around the world the opportunity who are not undefeated, who have some losses, still gives them a platform to <clears> showcase <throat> their styles and their, and their, their wares 
without having the WBC specifically. Yeah. WBC, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, control what's going on with them. Definitely some, some things. Well, you know, watch. you know what it does? It eliminates the A side versus the B side. Now you got two A sides or you got two B sides. Okay, you got an equal equal competition rather than someone that you know is going to win or has every opportunity to win and everything set toward the A side versus the B side which is basically an opponent status, okay? You kind of eliminate that whole that whole situation of fighting. Now you know I don't take sides, <laughs> but I'm very vocal in my opinion and you know I've been very vocal against Aiba, yes. Okay, on some of the things because some of the things what they do and how it reflects the United States, I don't like it and I still don't like it. But in this case, when you're talking about an international level and and what it can do and the possibilities of what what can happen in professional boxing, I like it. I'm all for it. So I don't hate Aiba just to hate him. Okay. Some things they do, I'm gonna like. Some things they do, and that's the way I am. I'm not. I'm well, not. I'm just, not a side taker. Well, I'm, I'm a boxing uh, a person. Well, it's just like me. You know, I don't hate you, but I disagree <laughs> with. I disagree with what you say. No, seriously. Uh, on a serious <laughs> note, no, you're exactly right. I think that uh, Aiba has shown that um, they're giving this opportunity to these boxers, and at some point, I hope that it includes United States boxers. But they have to get on board. They're going to have to make that decision with well, them. Get that's, on board, and that's where you disagree. That's, you that's, don't think that they need to well, get on board. Well, so. the effects that they have in the United States, uh, I, still, I, still don't, I still don't like a lot of the things. And we've talked about that right. in the past. Right. But in this case, in this case, when you're talking about international professional boxing, it stops the WBC from from putting everything for WBC fighters, uh, rated fighters, against opponents that come in. I mean, it just, it, it changes the game. So, so this is the first one, the door's open. Let's see what happens. Exactly. I mean, because don't forget, WBC's got a lot of money too, so they're not, <laughs> they're not going to just stand there and let That's what right. they see as a parasite coming into their, into their, uh, into their money, you know. Well, they've so, already let so, it be known that they're going to fight. So, so we're going to see what's going to happen. And bottom line is, it's going to be what you, the public, start supporting, and that's that's what's going to happen, you know. So, uh, I just wanted to bring that out. I, it kind of got me excited just to see that that fight was on the undercard of a major professional uh, uh, fight a, a fight card, a production, and I, I just, I just. I just thought that was so good, man. I even grabbed the wife and gave her a big old kiss. Something oh, wow. I haven't done in years. Jesus Christ. You know what? And, and the same way he feels about that, that's the way I feel about you, No, no. Go up here, and, and I know you're going to do your best against Heather Hardy. I expect uh, there's going to be a, uh, if you want to say shock the world, I say No, no's ready to do that. I'll be watching that, looking forward to that. Good. Okay. But we went a little over on this segment, but it was well worth it. Definitely okay. well worth it. We'll see you next week where we'll recap. All the action from this uh, this coming upcoming weekend's fights, as usual. We we'll, might even have another surprise guest for you. Who knows what we'll do here? That's right. All right. Till then, baby, keep them hands up. Keep them up, baby. <laughs>